Hi again everyone. Today I'm going to be giving a rundown of my latest project. SideOp Companion is a tool for making custom side ops in Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. SOC can simplify the process significantly, but there's still quite a bit of information that you'll need to know before you can start making your own side ops. So that's what I'm going to be talking about in this tutorial. I hope you'll find it helpful. Now to get started, we'll need to download a couple of things from Nexus Mods. Custom side ops require the Infinite Heaven mod in order to play them in-game, so we'll need to download and install Infinite Heaven. Make sure you've got the latest version. Currently for us, that's release 2.2.3. We'll also need to download SOC from its mod page. Its latest version is 0.5.1.0. After we've unpacked those two downloads, let's open up Snakebite Mod Manager. Along with Infinite Heaven, you'll also want to install a quick menu preset I made. Inside the Helpful User Resources folder, you'll find a file called SOC Quick Menu for Infinite Heaven. Go ahead and install that file, as well as Infinite Heaven. Now we're ready to make our side op. Let's boot up the game and start planning. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using Vialo Calais as the test bed, but almost all of the outposts in the game can be used for side ops. There are a few places that can't be used for side ops, but I'll talk about that later. So now I'm at the place where I want to make the side op, Wealo Village. It's time to start gathering information for our side op. We'll need to find locations on the map to place side op stuff, like prisoners, vehicles, and items. This is where that quick menu that you installed will come in handy. It binds a number of useful hotkeys to your gamepad or keyboard, which I'll be using to plan my side op. By holding the call button and then pressing the up button, the game will automatically mark all of the enemies and set them to friendly. Now we can plan the side op without interference from the soldiers. If we hold the call button and press the action button, it'll toggle free cam on and off. Free cam will give us a bird's eye view of the side op. During free cam, you can move up by pressing the zoom button and down by pressing the sprint button. You can also adjust the speed by holding down the action button and then moving forwards and backwards. For my side op, I want to spawn a couple of prisoners on the second floor of the main building. To do that, I'll warp Snake to the free cam position by holding the call button and then pressing the dive or the reload key. Now let's toggle the free cam off, and then we'll get our prisoner locations. This place looks nice, so we'll place a hostage right here. Hold the call button and then press the stance button to write the player's current position to the ihlog text file. Alright, now let's write another position for our other prisoner. Right here should be fine. Once we've got our positions written to ihlog, let's back out of the game and open up that text file. IHLog is located in the game directory, which you can open from Snakebite if you don't know where the game is installed. Open the mod folder, and then open IHLog.txt. We'll scroll to the bottom of the file, and then you'll find the stuff that was written when we logged our positions in the game. There's three pieces of useful information here. Firstly, you've got the quest area set to field. We'll use that later. Secondly, the positions we took are indeed suitable for side ops. If the positions weren't good, it would tell us here and in the game that the location wasn't suitable for side ops. And thirdly, we've got our two prisoner locations that we took from when we were in the game. With this info, let's go ahead and open up the side op companion.
This is the side op companion. There's a lot of stuff that we need to fill out on the first page, but it's not too bad once you get the hang of it. The first form to fill out is the FPK file name. This is basically just your side op's file name, so choose something unique and descriptive for it. The quest number is next. This number is how Infinite Heaven numbers the custom side ops. For testing purposes, it's okay for this number to be anything between 30103 and 39009. But if you're planning on publishing your side ops, you should contact Tin Man Techs about reserving specific side op numbers. You can read more about that on the GitHub page. The quest map is the area that the side op is taking place in. For me, that's going to be Afghanistan. Next is the quest area. If you remember, we can get this from the IH log. For me, it's going to be field, so let's go ahead and choose field. The map coordinates is where the side op circle is drawn on the iDroid map. For this, we can just take the rough coordinates of one of our prisoner locations from the IH log. The radius is how wide the circle is going to be when it appears on the iDroid. For this side op, let's set it to 3, which is a pretty average size. Now we've got to deal with the quest CP. There's a lot of enemy command post names in this list, and for our side op, we'll need to figure out which one is assigned to Vialo Village. To do this, let's pop back into the game and make use of another quick menu hotkey. First, we'll need to find an enemy to mark. After we mark them, I'm going to hold down the call button and then press the down button on the directional pad, which is the same as the down arrow on a keyboard. Doing this will print the soldier's name as well as the closest command post, which is what we're looking for. As you can see, the soldier's name is Soldier Village 0005, and the nearest command post is Village CP. So, opening SOC back up, we'll need to select Afghan Village CP when we fill in the Quest CP. There it is. The next form is the Quest Category, which is basically just a label that Infinite Heaven can use to filter side ops. You don't have to think too hard about this one. Just pick a category that fits your side op the best. Mine's going to be prisoner related, so I'm going with the prisoner category. The quest rank is just the GMP and heroism payoff that the player gets when they beat the side op. You should pick a rank that fits the difficulty of your side op, with S being the toughest and I being the easiest. Then you've got your objective types, either recovered or eliminate. The objective type decides whether you need to extract the targets or if you can just kill the targets to complete the side op. For my side op, I want the player to extract the two prisoners, so I'll go with Recovered. Now we go into the flavor text of the side op. The quest title is the name of the side op that appears on the iDroid menu. The quest description is the description of the side op that appears on the iDroid menu. The progress notification is the little announcement that pops up when you complete a side op task. I'm going with Prisoner Extracted but any of these other ones could technically work too. You can also create custom notifications. If that interests you, you can read more about it on the GitHub page. Alright, so now we've got all the setup information filled out. Our next step is to copy those two prisoner locations that we wrote to IHlog, and then paste them into the prisoner locations box. Here we've got the two positions, so let's copy these. And now let's paste them into here. Okay, so now it's time to move on to the next page. Hit the next button at the bottom right, and the side op companion will build the locational information. This is the details page, which will have these columns and boxes based on the information we fed it on the first page. You'll see that I've got three columns here. One is for adding new enemies to the outpost. 
The next is for customized enemies that are already in the outpost, like Soldier Village 0005 that we marked earlier. And the third column is for our two prisoners that we pasted from the IH log. Let's make some changes to these prisoners. First, let's set them as targets for the side op. And then we'll customize their characters a little bit. Now that we've made our changes to these two prisoners, let's hit the build button and test it out in the game. After we hit build, this side op build folder will appear in the application directory. This means that our side op is ready to be packed for snakebite. Let's save what we have for this side op before we move on. We can save side ops to XML files and then reload them later if we want to make any changes. Alright, we saved the side op. Let's turn this side op build into a snakebite file. Open up Makebyte, and in the top right corner, press the ellipses button, and then navigate to the side op build folder that we just made. Click on side op build, and then hit the select folder button. We should get some file paths appearing in this window. If you did it right, most of them should start with the assets folder at the beginning of the file paths. Now we'll fill in the rest of the mod information. Alright, let's go ahead and build the archive. Once that's taken care of, we can install the side op like any other mod. Let's open up Snakebite and install the side op test. Alright, now we're back in the game. As a quick tip, if you want to start the game from the ACC, you can hold the escape key until the Kojima Productions logo pops up. This can save you some time if you're testing mods with Infinite Heaven. Now I'm going to check the side missions tab to see if our new mission is available. Yep, there it is. Although if it wasn't open, we could go to the Infinite Heaven menu and open a specific side op. Just go to the side ops menu, and then go to open specific side op. Ours is last on the list, so it'll be number 162. Now the side op will be open even after we complete it. Anyway, let's get into the mission. So now we're back at Fialo Calais. Let's check if those prisoners spawned properly. Yep, there they are. All that's left for us to do is extract them and complete the side op. You can see that the progress notification that we chose is popping up in the log there. And mission complete. This side op was pretty bare bones though, so let's go ahead and add more detail and make things a little more interesting. Personally, I find that the best way to improve a side op is by creating obstacles for the player and including optional content to flesh out the experience. For this side op, I'm going to place some directional mines at the top of these stairs. That way the player will need to destroy them or find a way around them. When I go to place these mines, note that whichever way the camera is facing is the directions that the mines will be facing. If I want these mines to block the path, I'll need to face them towards the foot of the staircase. There, 
that should do it. As for optional content, I'll go ahead and place an unmanned heavy vehicle in this spot. So if the player wants to go out of their way, they can fault in the vehicle or maybe blow it up to cause a distraction or something like that. Unfortunately, players can't pilot the vehicles, so it's not going to be very useful for the player. And on top of that, you can only spawn maybe two or three vehicles reliably. After two, they might not even appear at all. So all in all, heavy vehicles are pretty situational. Anyway, let's open up IHLog again and pull out those positions that we logged. We've got three this time, the first two for the mines and the third for the vehicle. Let's go ahead and open Side Off Companion up again. Alright, let's load the Side Off file that we saved earlier. As you can see, all the info is just like we left it. If we wanted to, we could change the prisoner locations or edit their information, but I think they're fine as it is. Now let's copy and paste those two mine locations into the active items box. And then we'll copy and paste the last location into the vehicle box. Hit next and wait for it to build. Alright, so now we've got two more columns to work with. Let's maximize this really quick. We've got our vehicle box and our two active item boxes. Let's set these mines to maximum strength to pack that extra punch. You'll see here that we can choose from a couple of items depending on the situation. For now though, let's just keep with the directional mines. For the vehicle, I guess we should go for a Soviet type, but any of these would work just fine. We can also pick the color strength of the vehicle, although for us it's basically just how hard it'll be to blow up. Let's make this one red. Alright, we've got our new details. It's time for us to build it again. We'll also need to pack it with Makebyte again, and uninstall the last test version. After we've installed the new test version, let's go ahead and try it out in the game. This time, I think I'll do a mock playthrough of the side op so I can get a feel for the difficulty involved. I'll speed this up for you guys so you don't have to sit through it all. Now we can see our directional mines that we placed down. We can either blow them up and make some noise, or we can find a way around them. Let's go ahead and use the other way of getting around them. There we go. Let's go ahead and disarm these while we're up here. Alright, this is starting to shape up. There's some more things we could do for this side op, like adding static models to block an entrance, or maybe adding a sheep or two to distract the guards, but let's put that aside for now. Instead, let's go ahead and take a look at adding new soldiers to patrol the area, as well as customizing the pre-existing ones to better fit the side op. So, as we open our side op once again, let's take a look at these first two columns. The first column allows us to spawn up to 8 new soldiers for the side op area. 
And here we can do all sorts of things with the soldiers, like setting them as targets for the side op, or customizing their loadouts. Most importantly, we can decide on the patrol routes they're going to take. Now, the sneak route is the soldier's patrol when they aren't aware of the player. The caution route is the soldier's patrol during the caution phase. Unfortunately, the names of these routes aren't very helpful to us. You can read a little more about route names on the GitHub page, but at this point, we're basically just guessing at what these routes will look like. That is, until we test them out in the game. For this soldier, let's try using R0000 for a sneak route. and R0001 for his caution route. So he'll move from 0000 to 0001 when the outpost goes on alert. Now let's pick out some gear for the guy. In this list we can pick out the soldier's equipment as well as some special tactics that he can use. We'll keep it simple for now and just give him some basics. We can also give him a special outfit to wear, like if we want him to be a Soviet officer, we can pick out an outfit with a beret. For now though, let's just leave this guy's default. Like with the prisoners, we can also give soldiers specific staff types and skills. We'll make this guy good in the support unit, and we'll make him a zoologist. If we wanted, we can make this guy a target as well so the player would have to extract him as well as the prisoners. But again, let's just keep this simple. Now let's move on to the second column. In here we can customize soldiers that are already patrolling the outpost, in the same way that we could add new soldiers from column 1. Let's customize Soldier Village 0000 by giving him some new routes. Now if we set this soldier's sneak route to a route that has a C in his name, which is a caution route, the soldier will go on alert when he's patrolling the area. I'll show you what I mean when I get this guy into the game. Let's give him some heavy armor. And we'll make him patrol a little faster. He can be a combat staff, and let's give him the tough guy skill. Alright, now we've got a new soldier and retooled an existing soldier, so let's test the side op out one last time. Now we're back in the game. Let's look for those soldiers we edited. I think I just saw one when he was running to his new route, so let's check that out. Yep, that's one of the guys we customized. This guy must be Soldier Village 0000 since he's got that riot gear on. As you can see, this guy's walking around like he's on alert, even though it's the sneak phase. This is because we gave him that caution route to follow, C0005. We still need to find that other guy we spawned in though, the Soldier Quest 0000. It's going to be a little tough to find him with the scope from this distance. So let's set these guys to friendly and get a closer look. There's our customized soldier walking around his route. I think we picked a good route for this guy because he's patrolling the area that the players will be coming from if they drop off at that nearby LZ. I think we just found our other soldier. Let's check this guy out.
Yep, this is our zoologist, so his route is just hanging out under this tarp. If we wanted to check on this guy's caution route, we can hold the call button and then press the left button, and that'll toggle between sneak routes and caution routes. Looks like this guy's going to be hanging out by this doorway during the caution route. That should work out pretty well. Let's go find that other guy with the riot gear on. He should be running to his new route, so maybe we can spot him around here. Yep, there he is. Let's follow where he goes. So it looks like this guy's just going to take watch over on this side of the village. I don't know if he's going to move or if he's just going to stand there forever. So let's speed up time and see if he does anything. Nah, it looks like this guy's just going to stick around. I'd like for him to move around a little more, so I'll probably go back and find a better caution route for this guy. In any case, now we know how the two custom soldiers will patrol during the side op. All in all, I think these guys will make it a little more challenging to get to the target prisoners, so that should make for a better side op. Oh, I forgot to mention, but we can also confirm who these soldiers are by holding the call button and pressing the down button. You can see that this guy's name matches the one that we've got for him in the side op companion, Soldier Quest 0000. And same for the guy in the riot gear, Soldier Village 0000. This can be handy for taking notes on routes, too. So that's the basics of making side ops using SOC. Hopefully you found this a little helpful. Be sure to check out the GitHub page for a much more in-depth breakdown of SOC's capabilities and its limitations. I'll be around to answer any questions you might have or fix any bugs that might come up in the future, so let me know if you're having trouble. Also, I made some example side ops that you could load like we did for this one, if you want to check those out. They're included in the Helpful User Resources folder. Anyway, talk to you later. Good luck.